Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us dealing with a loved one with memory loss. Are you looking for a way to connect with your loved one? Maybe an activity to do the next time you visit? Something other than sitting around and answering the same questions over and over again like we always seem to do? Let me tell you about some books that I discovered that changed the last visit I had with mom tremendously. They're called Two Lap Books. They are simple read aloud books for memory challenged adults. You see, people with Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementias gradually lose their ability to initiate communication with others. Because of this, these uniquely adapted books, quote, give voice to these loved ones. By using the book's large, simple text and colorful illustrations, we can initiate conversations. Most noteworthy, reading books together can make meaningful connections with our loved ones and help stimulate their mind. Caregivers will enjoy sharing these books and creating purposeful, interactive activities for engaging people with memory deficits. Best of all, reading these books together will very likely bring out memories that you can share together. If you're interested in purchasing a two-lap book, there is a link to the Amazon page in the show notes. Lydia Burdick, the author of Two Lap Books, graciously gave us an interview and conversation in episode... 15 entitled two lap books the perfect activity to do with your loved one today so thank you and definitely check out her books because as i mentioned they were a fantastic way to spend a couple of hours with my mom and two of the other residents of her care community most of you are probably unaware but my profession for the last 25 26 years has been as a professional photographer that is a career that i still am deeply connected with. So when I found an Instagram account titled Alzheimer's Art, I was intrigued. I reached out to the account holder and asked if they'd be willing to have a conversation about what they were doing and their advocacy about Alzheimer's, people living with Alzheimer's, and what they are still capable of doing. You will find this conversation fascinating And perhaps maybe just a little bit tugging at the heartstrings because, as you'll hear, the account holder of this Instagram account is 21 years old. His mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's about a year and a half ago. She is now 52, which is almost how old I am. And not long after his mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, his grandmother was also diagnosed It's fascinating to me that this young man in the very beginnings of the prime of his life is able to deal with this, but he found a way to connect with both of his his mom and his grandmother through art. And I think you're going to love this conversation. So stay tuned. That's coming right up. Hello. 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 I'm not sure why I'm looking at myself. (laughs) Can you hear me? Yes, I can. How are you? Good. Doing good. So we finally uh, managed to connect. Yeah. I'm outside today. It's not too windy. I think this should work well. Yeah, it sounds fine so far. Oh, it's good. You might be better off than me because the housekeepers just showed up a few minutes ago. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's no problem. So I, I connected with you on face, or Facebook, Instagram. Because I don't think most of my listeners know I am a professional portrait photographer, so art is part of my everyday life. And I was interested in how you got into doing what you're doing. And I thought maybe you could talk to us about connecting with our loved ones through art and how it allows them to, for their personality to come out. Yeah, of course. Um, I guess I should have you introduce yourself first, though. (laughs) Okay. Um, Well, I'm Adam. I'm 21 years old, and I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, So my mom was diagnosed about a year and a half ago, and she's only 52. She was 50 and a half at the time with early onset Alzheimer's, and um, that was... That was kind of a surprise for all of us. Uh, so she was 
president of her real estate company in Charleston. And um, she had to step away from that. So <laughs> there's just a lot of changes in the past year and a half. And I'd say about six months after that, uh, my grandma got the diagnosis as well. But she's about 80. She was 81 at the time. So, I mean, it wasn't as big as big of a surprise, but still troublesome for the family for sure. Is that her mom or your dad's mom? No, that's uh that's her mom. Wow. It's same same lineage, yeah. Yeah, most of my listeners know I am my great grandmother passed before I was born, and I'm the same age as your mom, or just slightly younger. And she had no memory at the end of her life, according to all the family. My maternal grandmother, I believe, had undiagnosed Alzheimer's. She'd had a brain aneurysm that leaked for three months. And that obviously damages the brain, but it um, it doesn't, once it's repaired, it doesn't continue to have damaging effects. And she deteriorated for years after it, just like my mom is. And of course, my mom, who is 75, lives in a memory care community. And since my dad passed away last year. So yeah, it's not, it's like having a cannon pointed at my head. <laughs> yeah. It's not fun. That's why I started this podcast, to be helpful, you know, share the, what I've learned for people like me, you know, for people dealing with a loved one with Alzheimer's like you are. I mean, that's just, you're younger than my daughter, so that's just really, really horrible. And I'm, I can't, I, I know how you feel because I've been there, but you're so much younger. It's not, it's not cool. It's just strange because she's so young, like for... The, like six months after the diagnosis, um, I just wasn't ready for it. So, you know, I was just doubting the doctors, that type of thing. But um, obviously with the disease, it progressively gets worse. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it gets to the point where you can't really deny it anymore. And um, I mean, that's fine. That's just something you have to come to terms with over time. Well, that must uh, be really hard with they, my mom my mom started showing signs, you know, like 18 years ago. So that put her in her, what, late 50s, early 60s. I can't do math that good in my head. Um, and there were there was things I had to do with our family business. I had to start paying attention to what she was telling clients and what, you know, what, what she was. She would take orders and not write down directions or due dates or any helpful information to get the job done properly. So I had to start paying attention to that. And I knew at the, so I knew at that time that, you know, she was going down this path, but her progress has seemed to be really, really slow because I don't know anybody who's dealt with their family member with this disease for 18 years. And my mom is physically very healthy. So I have no idea how long she will actually still be with us. So it's, it, everybody's different. So I can see how, You know, I mean, you're so young and losing your mom a little bit at a time at that age is just, it's even worse, I think, than at my age. Yeah, I mean, just when I think of people with the disease, I'm thinking like 80, 80 years plus. Um, I mean, just 50 years old to get that diagnosis. Uh, I mean, it's just hard to believe at first. Um, But I mean... It's just something you got to deal with, and uh, I don't know. I try to spend as much time as possible, try to get her to do art as much as possible, just to get her to relax, have some like fun outlet for her. And that's the thing. Um, before she got the diagnosis, she never really did art. She was working a lot. Uh, just not really much time for hobbies, I guess. <laughs> and uh, she really, she really enjoys it now because she's not working at all. Right. Um, so this is it's just something fun for her to do. And uh, that's why I created the page. I mean, it's good for the victims themselves, but it also creates awareness um, for everyone else. Uh, so it's, it's good in multiple ways. So you do the art with your mom. Do you do it with your grandmother? Um, we, we try to get her to do it. She's... I think it because of her old age, um, she's declining faster. 
so it's a little little bit difficult. But yeah, she is a she is a painting that I plan on painting tomorrow. Um, yeah, so you'll see that then. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun dealing with it. It's it's interesting because they might get really into it for about a minute, then just get distracted. They might get anxious, forgive what they're drawing. Um, so that's why, like, I've got to stay there to remind them, just keep them focused. But they enjoy it, and that's the big part. So It's interesting. I've done some art with my mom. My mom was super creative. She did a lot of sewing and painting, and even in um, her later years, you know, when we were fairly certain she had, you know, memory issues, but before they were really a problem, she actually did really nice woodworking. And so she's very creative, but I have a heck of a time getting her to to do any art with me, but she does it with other people. And last week I was there visiting, and she, we there's um I don't know if you follow them on Instagram, but there's a gal that has written books that's called Two Lap Books, and they're designed for memory challenged adults, and they're fantastic. And so we were reading the book together and I was kind of helping her through. It was obvious that her, like she can read, but the processing, it was like her computer was just not doing great. And I left my recording device on when I went to the ladies room and she was reading the book with her friend without help. But I thought, wow, that's really interesting. When I'm with her, she seems to have, she wants me to do things for her, help her and, you know, talk her through art projects. But when I'm not there, she does them with other people. She obviously is different. And I thought that was really interesting. So I'm kind of interested in learning how you kind of coax your mom into doing some of the art because it would be something both my mom and I would enjoy. And I'm sure other people listening would enjoy doing it with their loved ones. Um. <laughs> That's a that's a tough one. Um, really, uh, I don't know. I just asked them if they want to draw with me on that day, and um, I guess they really enjoy like spending time with me. Uh, I work a lot, so I don't. I'm not always like at the house with them. They have like a separate caretaker. But when I do get home, um, I guess they're somewhat excited, and I uh, just like to do activities. But they don't – they can't drive or anything, so we're basically stuck at the house. So I'm I'm the one asking them if they want to paint with me. It's always like tagging along type of thing if they want to join me. So I ask them if they want to paint with me. Um, I enjoy art. I've been doing it since I was probably 12 years old. Uh, but uh, I do like – organic are just original stuff and for them mainly i'm getting them to trace something so in that situation they'll get started they might uh have an outline like two minutes into it and you get like a basic idea of what the painting will look like but they might get distracted like in the next minute so i've just got to kind of watch over them so i'll paint for a little and they'll get interested, and I'll ask if they want to join with me. And at that point, I really just kind of oversee and just try to keep them focused, just get them to try to finish a painting. And uh, as I said, most of them are, like, try to get them to copy another painting, but uh, several are original paintings, and that's something I think is really cool as well because um, – Obviously, this disease is so hard to understand. You, like the average person, might think they get 10 to 15 seconds of original thought. Then it just kind of disappears. Um, but when I get them to do an original painting, you really you get their thoughts put on paper, and it's there forever. So it's not something you can forget, and that's something really special to my whole family for sure yeah have you ever thought about doing this at with anybody else at like any of your local memory care communities 
Honestly, I haven't. Um, I mean, my page is barely, <laughs> barely a week old. So all this is brand new to me. <laughs> um, I'm kind of running out of art to post, but uh, definitely a lot of these things have like came into my head. Um, yeah, I would, I would definitely like to help out other people. I mean, you can uh, maybe that. even go to a memory community and and work with their uh, activity director and kind of show them how you coax your mom and your grandmother into original art because I, that's kind of what I'm interested. In. Do you have a how do you how do you how do you get them to start that? Because what I get with my mom and she's probably similar to your grandmother. She it's. It's kind of hard. It's like there's a block. Like, I had her do something last fall. Um, my sister's kids are still school age. My daughter's almost 27. But I had her do a really simple kind of craft project um, with Sharpie pens. And I showed her what we were doing. And then I had to talk her through every step. But I'm not sure how I could talk her through like putting down how she feels on paper, which today might actually might be beneficial because I think I mentioned in our DMs that I had to rehome her dog on Friday. And that's making me nervous about going and seeing her today. Hopefully she's forgotten about the dog. <laughs> <laughs> but she's yeah, had a dog never... she's had a dog as longer than she's had me. So yeah. I'm I'm not super confident that she'll forget the dog <laughs> that fast. Yeah. So I something I have some ideas for distractions today, but it's still pretty hot. So what? How do you coax them into an original art piece? Um, really, just really try to make them comfortable. I mean, a lot of times they're so easily distracted, and just like anxiety will take over, and they're just focused on something for like five minutes. Um, then they forget about it. I really just try to sit them down, have them watch me do what I'm doing for like five minutes. Then I stop. Um, just try to give them some ideas. It's kind of tough for them to just think of something to put down on paper or a canvas um, without some help. Like we live by the creek, so a lot of the pictures that I've posted are um, – just about like water, water landscapes like of the river or of the beach. Um, that one of the bird is like a bird that's specifically in our area that we see like every day. Um, so really, I just try to throw these ideas in their head. I know them really well. I spend a lot of time with my mom and grandma, so that's why it's a little bit easier for me. I don't know if I could go to like a care center and. Um, throw ideas around because I don't know if it was something they enjoyed that they still remember because the disease you progressively lose memory like you forget your most recent memories mm -hmm. first yeah. and what you hold on to is like you forget your childhood last so I don't have that kind of information for what they've enjoyed their entire life with other people like I do with my own family so that's one thing for me uh it's really something that they've loved for a long time. Just throw that around, try to get them to draw that. Um, I would think, have you ever done one of those paint nights? You know, they have like the, what do they call those? Like the, like the Pino and paint, you know, where it's like the wine event and the painting where the instructor guides everybody through the same painting. Something along yeah. those lines might help. And the care staff usually knows not super detailed, but because unfortunately care staffs do turn over somewhat frequently because I'm sure you can understand that's a really tough job. But they, they yeah. have enough information. I think they could, if you helped them, they could help the people, I, I would think. Mm -hmm. um, our, right now, the um, where my mom's living is renovating, but after they're all done with that mayhem, which when you have people with cog cognitive issues and where they live is all turned upside down because they're painting, they're putting in new carpet and 
all, you know, all those necessary things. It's just way too much to try to introduce something new. So I'm, I'm waiting until the fall and then I'm going to work with their new activities director and see if we can find some other things to do. What I do with my mom, she obviously can't drive either. The thought of that's kind of terrifying. <laughs> I take her uh, yeah. out. Um, you said you're by a creek. My mom loves to go out and look at the sky and look at the trees. There's a local park where there's a like a splash zone for the kids to cool off in. And we went there one day. We had lunch. And we sat there for about an hour and a half until I thought I was going to melt into a puddle because it was over 90 degrees. <laughs> and finally her friend was ready to go. And they they just loved watching the little kids. So that's also something that you could do with them, um, you know, especially if it gets them out of the house. I find getting my mom out in nature and the sunshine and away from where she lives, which is a fantastic place, but it's um, – just a change of pace kind of seems to give her brain a little stimulation. And then, you know, I spend, oh, yeah. you know, it's, I, I finally had to do that because, you know, spending all winter with her in the, the care community and it's really brightly lit. There's a, basically it's a square around a courtyard that they have access to that's fully protected, you know, but it was just too cold and wet. And, you know, even when it was, warm-ish they didn't really want to go outside so after once it finally warmed up i'm like we're getting out of here i can't take this place anymore yeah no i mean last summer i'd say probably uh four four or five months after diagnosis um obviously my mom was like pretty bummed out about getting diagnosed with that she had to leave her job just life turned upside down uh, mm -hmm. very quickly and um, we live in a – she lives in a small town, so it's just like same thing every day type of thing. But uh, we went up to D.C. in June last year for my cousin's graduation for about a week and um, really, really brightened her up. Um, it was like her memory came back like for a few days, um, really – different mood that I had not seen in her for a few months. Um, I mean, we're like 10 hours away from there driving and, uh, we just got her up there, just new scenery. She hadn't been there in about a decade, but she really enjoyed it. I think the change of scenery, that is something that will just like spark up their brain. For yeah. I was, however long you're there for. I was hesitant to take her out too much because, five minutes in the car and she's like, where are we going? And just like really concerned. Fortunately yeah. for me, this beautiful regional park is literally 10 minutes from where she lives. And there's a, like a community park with a swimming pool and um, various things. I haven't taken her there yet. Cause well, we did go to one, there's a lot of stuff around and I've, I'm venturing a little further away from where she lives and it's, it's been fine, but originally, you know, like five minutes in the car, and she's just harassing me, like, where are we going, and why are we going, and blah, blah, blah. It's just crazy. So it's, it's interesting. So tell me a little bit more about your mom. Did she have symptoms? Like, there's a gal, and you might want to listen to, it's, it's the full first full episode that I did. I interviewed a gal. Um, by the name of Pam Montana, and she's um, she's about a decade older than your mom, but she also had younger onset Alzheimer's, and she talks about all of the things that she does to help keep her brain as healthy as possible, and she does a lot of advocacy and fundraising to find a cure or something, a preventative measure. So that mm -hmm. might help you, and I don't know if I don't know how focused your mom can be, but it might help her too. Because that was a fascinating conversation, and we could have talked way longer, but she had a time limit because she needed to drive back to her home, and she knew she needed to be on the road by a certain time. So it was very interesting because once she got to that time, it was like, 
we're done. <laughs> she kind of cut me off when we were done, but it was fun. It was, really, it was a great talk. So tell me about your mom. Well, uh, before this all happened, she was a real estate agent um, at my grandpa's company. And uh, she eventually took over as president, broker in charge, uh, once my grandpa got a little older. He's still alive. He's he's killing it. He's like 92 right now. He's That's awesome. I don't know. He, he's got amazing energy. Yeah, his memory is still good. He just mowed like three acres of grass today. So I hope he has a riding mower. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. So he's staying active. He's he's a great guy for sure. Um, but my mom took over that office, and it was a lot of work. Um, she probably – I'd say she was like 43 when she took over. It was right after the recession in 2008. Um, <laughs> she took over at that point. That's not a fun yeah, time would, to take over in real estate. Yeah, not at all. Was, that <laughs> My husband's was, a realtor. Oh, yeah. No, I mean that time was – that was more rough than like after the diagnosis a few years ago. That was that was a horrible time. Yeah, it um, was. But, but they, they stayed open, so that was good. Um, now they're one of like the top companies in the area. They just sold the office earlier this year. Um but she was really good at it. She loved her job. Um, just loves houses. She's lived in the area her whole life. Um, so that just makes her pretty good for a realtor and just a really nice, caring person. So she's perfectly fit for the job. Um, but I mean, after the diagnosis, she, I don't know, that was all taken away from her. And I think that kind of got her depressed for a little bit and that added on to the memory loss. Uh, I don't know. It was definitely rough for her and the family. Did, did but, she um, have symptoms beforehand that now you look back and you're like, Oh yeah, I, I think that was probably when it started. Yeah, definitely. I would say about four years before it was just her memory wasn't good. Uh, she would ask same questions over and over repeating and just really frustrating. That was before I could drive and stuff. And um, like if I needed her for a ride and she forgot about it just because she's busy, she's got all these phone calls to make, all these emails to write, like all these clients, like real estate and property management. There's just a lot of random things that happen. Oh, I, I, live, work in I live with that. Now. <laughs> and uh, you just get a lot of random stuff, like after hours stuff. And uh, all that would happen, and she might have forgotten to pick me up for swim practice or whatever. And uh, I don't know. It's just a stressful job. And I would say the main thing that I do remember was she was not getting a lot of sleep. Um, so, I mean, she would go to work tired. She would be working like 12-hour days. Um, I'm an only child, and she was a single mother. So it was – just a lot of things on her plate for sure. Um, That's a it's lot. Just cra yeah, it really is crazy. And they um, do say that sleep is really super important. My husband and I have um, started making sure that all the blinds are closed. There's no electronic lights blinking anywhere in our room. And we do have those um, they're, um, snap on outlet covers that have like little lights at the bottom and we put mm -hmm. one of those in our bathroom two summers ago I was recovering from a broken collarbone and we have three golden retrievers so we put one of those in our bathroom so that we didn't have any incidences of tripping over a dog in the middle of the night and now we close the bathroom door so that the light so it's as black as possible in our room and he's sleeping a lot better he does property management and real estate too, so I can completely relate to where your mom was at. It's yeah. it's a tough job. <laughs> yeah. And she and, didn't um, have any – oh, but your grandmother was diagnosed after her. That must have been yeah, really – That was weird, um, definitely weird. I, I would say my grandmother's symptoms are prog progressing faster. Uh, I don't know. I mean – 
there's one day where my grandma drove to the office and she parked her car in some really random location, walked to the office, forgot where her car was, and she was just roaming around. Uh, like in this small town, we don't have many sidewalks. So she's just like on the side of the highway looking for a car. Um, just strange things, you know. It's unpredictable to say the least every day. Just you really don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, I mean, she was looking for a car. We had, uh, we had to go pick her up. We didn't know where she was. We had to drive around, find her. And I think that was the day for my grandma, at least, that really – we had to figure out what was up. But my mom, when she went to the doctor at first, uh, like for sleep problems, they gave her medicine. But I would say it didn't work too well just because she's still got to be up at a certain time in the morning. Um, I mean, like sleep medicine will help you get to sleep. But if you're still only sleeping like six hours, that sleep medicine is probably just going to make you tired when you wake up. Yeah, you have to have a full, what I understand, like a full eight hours. Like, if, you, yeah, if you need eight hours of sleep, you need to take like half hour before you need to be awake. And that should be a little bit more before you have to be up. Because if, it if it's not completely out of your system, you're going to be groggy. Oh, yeah, totally. Very groggy. And I'm not sure those things are great for your brain anyway. Yeah, I don't think so at all. I have a question. Did your mom ever have a head injury or a concussion or anything uh, that you're aware of? No, not that I'm aware of. Um, I mean, my mom was in a car accident in December of 91. And she hit her face so hard on the steering wheel it damaged the nerve that comes through your cheekbone. Yeah. And so that was de December of 91. And when we look back, we think she started having memory issues in June, like the summer of 95. So like yeah. four and a half years later, she was starting to not write down uh, when a client was going to pick something up or, you know, and, and she would say, well, I, I was going to do that. So it didn't really matter. And well, okay. Yeah. If you're going to handle the order, it, it was very easy to just say, yeah, that that's, seemed logical. But when you look back, you think, huh. And I always wonder if the car accident maybe triggered the earlier onset of um, symptoms because my grandmother and my great-grandmother were elderly when their memories went bad. So it's that's why I was asking, since your mom is so young, she's like my age, that's scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um now, do you go uh, to a really, support group? Wait, say that one more time. Do you go to a support group for people with loved ones with memory loss? <laughs> no, I really don't. Um, I don't really don't do anything. Just this page, honestly. Uh, I started going in November, and it's been really helpful. I don't. You said you're in a small town. I'm in a small city. I don't know how. Um, where I'm in. I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area, but we're in the suburbs as far out as you can get and still be in the Bay Area. But it's a yeah. small city of about 60,000, so that's not probably small like your town. But yeah. it's been really awesome. So if there's one anywhere near you, I would highly recommend it. You might be able to help other people sometimes. That's what I find. Sometimes I go and I get supported, and other times I go and... I'm helping people, and it, of course, that makes you feel good too. Yeah, um, I mean, I would say like just because I'm still a student, and uh, just because I'm working as well, I'm not like the full time caretaker, so I'm not, I'm not really bearing like a lot of the stress of what's coming. Um, like, obviously, I enjoy the time with them, and on Mondays when I'm with my mom. Uh, the caretaker's not there. Um, but, I mean, I really don't feel the stress of it as much just because they want me to focus on school and they want me to stay working instead of, like, taking care of my mom full time. Just, you know, if it was, like, 10 years from now and I'm 31, I might be in a position where, I like, I have to support her full time, but they still want me to like do what I have to do with my life just because I'm so young. Right. Um, well, keep so it in mind if, if you ever 
feel that way. They're the support groups that the Alzheimer's Associ- Alzheimer's Association puts on are fantastic. At least the ones I've been to have been fantastic. Yeah. No, I mean, even on like the week and a half that I've been on Instagram, just uh, the people that have like messaged me from all across the world, um, just talking about their story, it's pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> I probably felt a little inundated. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's it's only been a week, too. And oh, my. I didn't realize it had been that short. <laughs> yeah, really. I just put up the art just – Wanted to see what would happen, and uh, I mean, the interactions have been pretty crazy. I mean, it's fun too. Um, I don't know. I mean, what most people think of the disease is just like frustration and all that, all that bad stuff. I just want to. When I'm in the room with my mom or grandma doing art, it's a calm environment. Uh, there's a lot of anxiety, like looking for something they lost. I know my grandma probably lost like three iPhones oh, no. within a month. Oh no. And, um, I mean, just stuff like that. But like when I'm in the room with them painting, it's just a completely different environment. And, um, if there's anything I can do for like my followers with, uh, <laughs> with a loved one with the disease, it's just sort of to like inspire that calm environment with their, with their family while they're still here. Um, that's what kind of what I'm going for. Just shed a different light on the disease for sure. Yeah. Well, now what you're doing is fantastic because I know from talking to other people that it's just, there's just, there's a real estate gal in my support group and she's just so frustrated and burning out rapidly. And it's, and I know, you know, cause her mom moved in with her And we were discussing it the other day on some alternatives that she could perhaps do just to get some relief because it's just her, her son comes on the weekends, I believe she said. And it's, you know, she was very, she's, she's burning out and these kind of things are, are helpful. You know, it's like my mom's in a care community, but there's still a lot of stuff that I, my sister and I deal with. And there's a lot of times because, and it's mostly, mostly women in the community, you know, they're in and out of each other's rooms. There's one gal there that thinks every, if she sees it, it's hers. It's it's funny, but it's frustrating. And I've gone there and my mom's wearing somebody else's clothes. And it's just like, you can either laugh and say, well, this outfit's kind of cute on her. So what the heck? Or you can get all frustrated and. I'd rather just laugh because, you know, at least she's dressed. I showed up one day and one of the gals was running around with no pants on. So oh, <laughs> I was like, no oh, way. yeah, I don't, I don't want that to be my mom. I'll let her wear somebody else's clothes. So it's, you know, they. No. What do you think about this? Um, it was like a fun fact for one of, one of my first pictures I put up. But I found it on the Alzheimer's Association's website. And it was like. Two out of every three people diagnosed are women. Right. And um, obviously, that's a big margin. And I think that's something that should be researched for sure. And at least in my family specifically, it's only been women. So it's my grandma, it's my mom, and my great aunt, like my grandpa's sister. Yeah. But none of the men. I don't – I honestly can't tell you any, like – man that's been diagnosed with this um i didn't know any men personally but there are i'm trying to think i think the memory community has like 30 or 32 rooms and i think there's like four men they they seem to come and go faster so it's hard to keep track of them but i think they are trying to figure out what the gender connection is And it's interesting you brought that up. Uh, We had a gentleman talking about autism in our rotary meeting today. And it kind of, and that affects males more than females. And it kind of got me wondering because they think there's environmental causes with autism and possibly Alzheimer's. And I'm wondering if it'd be interesting to see if there's some sort of correlation, like an environmental thing that's triggering autism in men or boys and 
Alzheimer's in women because it's kind of a similar cognitive issue. I mean, obviously in Alzheimer's, their brain is shrinking and it's dying and that's not the case with autism. But I just thought it was really interesting because autistic people get frustrated and overstimulated and it's like they can't process what's going on and people with Alzheimer's have the same issue. And it's like, I thought that was really interesting. It's like similar issue, different cause. So yeah. And different genders. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, huh. I was just kind of sitting there thinking, you know, maybe 50 years from now they'll find some connection that, but you know, it's, I don't know. It was, I just thought that was very interesting that we have these two different epidemics that are similar, but yet so different. But I just think it's fantastic what you're doing. And like I said, I didn't realize you'd only been on Facebook for a, or Instagram for a week and a half. That's awesome. Yeah, no, seriously. I mean, I I've been running out of art, and I like I'm trying to do like at least two two pictures a week to post. In this past week, I only had one, and I was I was getting pretty scared. But I had one person from the UK send me a picture. It was actually her dad. That is one person I know who is a male, but uh, her dad. And it was that picture of the horse. I don't know if you saw it. Um, it was like that picture of the horse that he painted before diagnosis and uh, a recreation, like on a – looked like a napkin afterwards. But it was really good, the, the recreation. Um, probably better than I could do right now. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Well, I do photography because I can't draw worth beans, but I can do, I can actually paint a little bit. So I'm, I'm contemplating how to encourage my mom. Obviously, I won't try today because I'm not prepared, but after talking to you, I could see, you know, hey, do you want to do this with me is better than, hey, let's do this together. So that, that might be um, a better option. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, what are her interests? Um, what's something she's really enjoyed her whole life? Like, I know you were talking about her dogs. <laughs> Maybe she could paint, like, her dog or something. Uh, That's not a bad know. idea. It's a little challenging because she's a black miniature poodle. So it's months ago I tried to have her, you know, the community was doing um, coloring, which I think – kind of subconsciously she thinks of as childish because she really resists but I so I I was like well I find it really relaxing and I told her you know, I have the adult coloring books and blah 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 and, you know tried to take away the childish subconscious feeling that I was getting from her and I pulled out a picture of a poodle and she had a hard time distinguishing like inside the line that was part of the dog and outside that was the negative space the the not part of the dog and it was really frustrating for her and I didn't know how to help her with that so I'm thinking if she just does it on her own and not try to color in the lines that might actually be less stressful yeah I mean just get them started and uh I would say as long as they're just focused on on the painting itself, just whatever, not really staying the lines, but just like completing the painting, filling up all the space, just see what it comes out to in the end. Um, Cause I mean, it might surprise you. It might surprise them or anyone else in your family. Uh, Cause you really don't know what they're capable of until they put it out there. And that's what really surprised me. I saw some of these pictures that they came home with after like an art lesson with one of the people we go to church with. And I was just blown away. That's what initially like made me want to create this page just because I didn't know that they had this capability. Um, I mean, it was just surprising. And, uh, yeah, to see what – I would just say like see what you can do organically. Um, yeah, it'll give you like an insight into what she's thinking about because you really – their brains are just so mysterious and – change so fast you really don't know yeah no that's definitely true no i'm definitely going to try organic not color inside the lines because like with reading which as i mentioned earlier she can do and she does better when i'm not there which is really interesting but i think i think that constraint you know it's hard for her to distinguish 
is this inside the dog or outside the dog and is this the collar or is this its neck yeah it's these little things that distract you or distract her that just take away from like the fun of it and like what the finished copy could look like um like focusing on the collar and small things like that might take away from like a really beautiful picture that could be possible at the end you know yeah no i'm definitely gonna try my pull my supplies together for next week and give that a try and then i'll i'll message you and let you know how it goes <laughs> no and i mean it doesn't even have to be like a like a painting like we live at the beach here and mm-hmm. um my mom loves to go around and pick up seashells i don't know if you've seen my like instagram stories but she's probably got like 500 seashells just on like on the counter i don't know if she forgot she has them or what but uh She's made several picture frames, not like a painting or anything, just a frame, just gluing different seashells around it for a cool border. And, um, you know, it doesn't have to be painting, but it's still it's still artistic and it's still her like doing something for fun and uh, just putting her brain to work. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if keeping them mentally engaged like prolongs their like capabilities it does. Um, it does? Yeah. Yeah. Because um. I've noticed when my dad was my dad was diabetic and he didn't have a lot of patience with her, which I totally understand because I spend a couple hours with her every week and I come home and it's just like I, I either need to read or I need to like re-engage in the real world, so to speak. But they didn't – it got to the point where it was – super frustrating for him to go out with her and so they were home a lot and now that she's in the memory community I I laugh because I show up and it's her and a couple other ladies and they're sitting in the dining room and they're just talking and I know from talking to all of them that none of them have more than two or three minutes of short-term memory so I I've now started sneaking in to see if I can catch them if I can find them chit-chatting before they see me, because I'm just dying to know what they talk about. Because if I yeah. just sit there and talk with my mom, she'll say, well, what have you been up to? And I'll tell her, well, I just came from Rotary and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then she'll say, so what have you been up to? And then I'll tell her something else. Well, I've been da 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 talked to Patrick <laughs> on Skype today, da 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 You know, and I'll yeah. give her all these different answers, you know, like one answer and then the whole conversation encompasses everything that I've done. And we can just rinse and repeat that for hours if I, you know, till I can't take it anymore. So I, I'm fascinated as to what they talk about. And I haven't oh, really yeah. seen a, like, a lot of times with Alzheimer's and dementia, they plateau. And then they have, like, a dip where it's like, whoa, you know, mom's, you know, she's really... She's lost some stuff there, and then they plateau again. And I haven't really noticed a dip with my mom. It was absolutely horrible when we moved her in. She didn't think she belonged there. She didn't. She didn't want to be there. And like I said, my sister's four and a half years younger than me. I'm school age kids, and she works full time. And my daughter had just moved out the month before. I wasn't even prepared for having my mother here. And my husband and I are both self-employed. So it's like, hey, <laughs> it's like, you do belong here. And I think it's been really good for her um, because she has other people that she could tell the same story to over and over and over. And they don't, they don't get frustrated. They don't roll their eyes at her or, you know, all that negative stuff that they pick up on. So I think it's really good. And, and it definitely helps if they have – Social outlets and mental stimulation definitely is good for them. Yeah. And um, like you were talking about uh, plateaus and dips. Um, what do you think about like good days or bad days for memory? So well, I, I've noticed some days, some days it's like, a, like you would say a plateau just where she's been for the most part, like the average capability. Then some days it just maybe just for that one day just drops off. Yeah, no, I've, I've noticed that with my mom. There's days where she's more anxious, and I'll, I'll show up for a visit, and something seems to be bugging her, but I can't figure out what. 
And I just think, you know, we all have da- days where it's like, you know, I'm sure you have days where you're like, oh, I don't want to go to school or I don't want to go to work or, you know, I just want to like stay in my room and paint or whatever. You know, we yeah. all have our good days and bad days and they, I'm sure they still have good and bad days too. It just shows up differently. Yeah, that's true. You know, it's just, um. it's, it's a terrifying and yet fascinating world. And if you can find the humor or, you know, the little moments of joy, sometimes they're very small. Like I take my mom out to the regional park and we hike around a little bit and, you know, she loves to look at the sky, even if it's just blue and no clouds. She just, and it's like, okay. And so I'll stop and I'll look at the sky too. Cause you know, you're busy. How often do you just stop and take a deep breath and look at the sky? <laughs> Probably not, not often enough. <laughs> yeah. Not often enough. Yeah. So it's, sure. I try to find those kind of little joys and that kind of one of the, um, reasons for starting the podcast too is because my mom is in later stages and you know dealing with her and trying to connect with her people will say well you know bring photo albums and reminisce about the past and I did that with a scrapbook my sister made of pictures of the two of us and she could not remember my sister and I don't look at all alike I'm blonde my sister's brown hair I sunburn if I'm in the sun for 10 minutes she tans through the windows. I mean, it's just crazy. We're just really opposite people. And she could not remember that the blonde kid in the pictures was me. And it it got to the point where it was really frustrating because I'm like, seriously, you have two kids. One is blonde, one is brown hair. I mean, come on. I mean, like, really? How many times do I have to tell you it's me? So that didn't work. And then I took her wedding album and she could remember her and my dad and the parents, but she couldn't remember any of the cousins and she didn't really quite remember her siblings and so it was just frustrating so I'm like there's got to be a way of connecting and having enjoyable visits that don't make me want to go you know tearing out of the parking lot at 50 miles an hour and never look back and and you know I have found that going out and just doing little little excursions has been really helpful but you know winter is coming it's like hard to imagine since it's so hot but It is coming, and I'm definitely going to try a different direction with the art with her after talking to you because, you know, I enjoy it, and I think if I'm enjoying myself, she'll enjoy herself more too. No, I mean, yeah, not only will it be good for her, um, I mean, I think once you, like, sit her down, start to see what she's capable of, that'll, I think that'll be joyous for you as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, especially if you've never done something like that before. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just been a great experience, and they enjoy it too. Uh, watching them be happy, that's good for me for sure. Oh, definitely. Well, I applaud you for figuring out something to do with both of them because it, like, it, it isn't easy, and, you know, they change and – it's sometimes it's like chasing the water down the drain. You're like, you know, you think you've got a handle on how to keep them happy and, and enjoy your time with them. And then things change and it's, it's hard. So I really applaud you for that. And I'm really glad that I found your Instagram account so fast. Oh yeah. I don't know how that happened when I've got such a small amount of followers. Hashtag, I'm honestly right? shocked. Yeah. I'm shocked with like, how many people have messaged me with their story and stuff. It's just no one, like everyone that messages me, I'll ask if they've like tried art with their like mom or dad or whatever. And most of them say no. And uh, I guess they just haven't thought of it. And um, I mean, if I can just get them to do that and enjoy it, I mean, that's just, that just feels amazing, you know? Well, I think it's amazing. You're helping your mom and your grandmother and you're also helping people around the globe with no, just, it's just a little, you really, know, go really ahead. really got, like, followers on every continent besides Antarctica that are uh, <laughs> DMing me their story. And, I mean, that's pretty crazy. That is awesome. That means yeah. you touched a nerve. That's just fantastic. Yeah. What, are you, what are you studying in school? 
Uh, just political science. <laughs> I'm not trying to be like a doctor or neurologist or anything. Uh, well, I was wondering if, if you were doing yeah. art. My daughter's got a Bachelor of Fine Art in Video Game Design. So I, I didn't know if you were going more that direction or... It's interesting. It's interesting how our paths diverge and change with, you know, life. You probably haven't experienced it as much as I have, but it's like, you know, you plan... It's like, this is what I'm doing, this is where I'm going, and then life comes along and nudges you onto a different path, and look at all these people you've already helped. That's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm totally surprised. Well, and, I mean, I just started to, but uh, just with this page, I'm just kind of obsessed with it, just talking to the people that have, like, sent me their stories, trying to figure out, like, how they're doing. Um, they're telling me about how they're introducing art, uh, with their parents. Um, I mean, it's just awesome. It, it's, it's not like a job you can apply for, you know, it, no. all this is completely random too. Yeah. It's, that's, just, it's, a, it's amazing. It is. It's really cool. Well, I should probably let you go and I really appreciate our conversation and I really appreciate what you're doing for your mom and your grandma and the rest of the world. Because it is really important, you know, letting people know that they can do other things and they should do as much as they can for as long as they can. Because it, uh, to me, that's yeah. just the right thing to do. And I'm, yeah. I just applaud you at 21. You're not like, yeah, whatever. You know, you're actually doing something. You're helping other people. I think that's really cool. <laughs> I mean, I, I enjoy it. It's been a... It's only been a week and a half, but, I mean, it's been fun. So, Well, that's awesome. Well, I will, once this silly, I'm trying to upload an a Instagram story, and it's giving me a fit. I don't know why it's taking so long, but I will go back and post the pictures I took of my mom. It's been about eight, nine months since we did this one little art project. I'll post those pictures and tag you. So you can see what we did before. And then, like I said, I'm going to try some different different methods with her and see if we have a more enjoyable outcome. It was still fun, but it was – and I was still learning how to deal with her a little bit more. But I had to, like, literally coax her through every little thing. So I yeah. would, I'd rather see what she could do with less coaxing. And I don't know. I don't know if she's at a point where that's not an option or not. But it, it'll be fun to try. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if you sit her down and um, if you're like painting your own thing, you just tell her to do what she wants to do on the canvas. I think you'll be surprised at what comes out of it. Yeah, I'm. De I'll definitely give that a shot and let you know how that comes out, and then, and and go from there. Awesome. All righty. Well, right. you have a good evening, and I appreciate the conversation. Yeah. I <laughs> Thanks for letting me on, honestly. I did not think I would have this within the first week and a half. Well, I mean, like I said, it means that you've touched a nerve. And and like I've said, awareness is so very important. And letting people know that people living with Alzheimer's can do more is is great. And obviously you, you hit a nerve. So <laughs> I applaud you. I mean, you didn't intend to hit a nerve and and start a little movement here, but maybe you did, and maybe you'll help people that you never meet. We'll definitely keep in touch. I will definitely watch for new artwork on your Instagram page, and I would love to hear more about the people that are contacting you, too, so I'll be reading about those stories, I hope. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, well, let's, let's stay in touch for sure. Definitely. Well, I appreciate this, and I will definitely link your page when I put up this episode so that you can hear it if you want to. Awesome. All righty. Well, thank you so much and you have a great evening. Yes. Thank you. All righty. Have bye-bye. As of this recording, I have not had the opportunity to try out a different direction of art with mom, but I definitely intend to. I'm going to uh, go to the art store this weekend and get supplies, but I think you should give it a shot, too. It's relaxing, and you never know what might generate. 
And if you're on Instagram, definitely tag the art with the uh, Alzheimer's art account that you'll find in the show notes. And uh, let us know what you get, because I think it'll be fantastic to find out. Thanks so much. Talk to you guys again next week. MBK Senior Communities is dedicated to being the preferred senior living provider in the markets they serve. They create warm, inviting living spaces in desirable locations. They offer a variety of services and programs to enrich the lives of residents and their families. And by getting to know their residents, their personal preferences, and their individual needs, MBK Senior Communities can better contribute to their well-being and provide care that's right for them. They are committed to enhancing independence and quality of life, serving others the way they prefer to be treated, and providing care that is delivered with integrity, dignity, and compassion. Currently serving the Western United States, but expanding. Why not contact your local community for a tour and see for yourself why most of their residents say they felt at home from their very first visit? You can get more information by visiting their website at mbk seniorliving.com or call 949-242-1400.